Today, I'm going to talk about a pendulum and I'm going to use the technique of Lagrangians to solve the movement of the pendulum. So we're going to come up with a second order li linear differential equation. And uh, we're going to solve that equation and see what the behavior of this pendulum is. So the pendulum moves in essentially in a flat plane and can only go back and forth like so. Yeah. There is a damper here with a constant C and there's a spring here with a constant K and there's a mass here of the pendulum. Yeah, the pendulum has a length L so there's a bar with length L which is massless uh, that makes sure that this mass can go back and forth in a pendulum like way. Okay, so in order to solve this using Lagrangians we're going to use generalized coordinates and if you look carefully there's only one coordinate that's really of any importance because it, it does move in a flat plane going back and forth only the theta here is relevant and we can use that as a generalized coordinate the generalized movement as a consequence will be delta theta yeah so now we're going to look at generalized forces and there's one generalized force here and that's because of the pot here it's a dampening dampening mechanism here with constant c and the way it dampens is uh, using a generalized force fi in this case f1 and that is linear to the speed so since this is grounded the speed of this point here is important to determine how much that thing will dampen and and c of course so the speed at this point is a d theta dt right and then the generalized force is minus c times that speed v so that's the generalized force here so you have to look at all the generalized forces but there's only one here so the work done here on this movement is only due to this one force based on that damper there the generalized movement here delta ri which is delta r1 in this case which is essentially a delta theta length a here times delta theta is the move delta x that it moves back and forth here and that's what you see here if you work that out you get minus c a squared times theta dot and that's the generalized force which is a non-conservative force in this and that's the only one there is this is the only non-conservative force in here in this case it's a torque because we talk about angles here okay so the next step is calculating the Lagrangian and the Lagrangian is usually T minus V which is the kinetic energy of the system minus the potential energy of the system so there's only one term that has kinetic energy in this system and that's because this thing is massless this is considered massless this rod is considered massless there's only one mass here that adds something to the mix to the kinetic energy mix and that's this mass so you that's a half mv squared so you have to calculate the speed of this this mass m and that's obviously l d theta dt right so that's how fast v is omega r usually and omega is d theta dt so L d theta dt gives the speed at this point of the mass m. So as a consequence, your kinetic energy will be a half m L squared theta squared here. Okay, now let's go to uh, the potential energy. There are two terms in here. This has potential energy, and of course this has potential energy. So let's start with this one. Normally potential energy is m times g times L. That's the potential energy and zero point is done here so the potential energy is that if you swing up of course you're going to lose a little bit of height so you're going to lose potential energy which is transferred into uh, kinetic energy so if you look at that what you lose is l cosine phi so you lose mgl cosine phi that's going to be reduced by that amount if you go up and that's what's depicted here now we want to have a linear differential equation out of it so we're going to linearize this equation if theta is small enough 
you can use Taylor expansion and you get one minus half theta squared. And if you work that out, you get a half MGL theta squared. So that's V1. V2, potential energy of the spring, is usually a half kx squared, where x is the movement of the spring. How much does that spring move? How much is x? That's b, and again, times theta, right? That's how much that spring will move back and forth here. And it is assumed here that the spring only moves in a horizontal fashion. Same here, right? So that gives you a half k b theta squared. Adding it up, two terms, you get this. And again, using t minus v for the Lagrangian gives you the kinetic energy term here. That's the t term, uh, sorry, the t term here, minus the two uh, v1 and v2 terms here. And that gives you the Lagrangian. Yeah, so now we have the Lagrangian and we also have the generalized force, which we calculated before. So now we can fold this into the Lagrange equation, which you see here, to generate the equation of motion. So this is the behavior of theta over time. And that's a linear differential equation of second order, as you can see. It's just filling it out. It's just a little L algebra exercise, right? So you differentiate dl towards theta, you get m times l uh, squared theta dot, you differentiate that towards t and you get this term, ml squared theta dot dot. The generalized force here is stated here on the left, I move that to the right so it becomes a plus, because I make it an equal sign here, equal zero. And then the potential terms, the dl d thetas, those two terms you differentiate to theta, and you get mgl theta for this one if you differentiate and kb squared theta for that term if you differentiate. So here you have your differential equation, linear differential equation of second order, which you can easily solve. Yeah, it has a generic solution. It has two exponents in there, alpha, alpha 1 e to the power lambda 1t plus alpha 2 e to the power lambda 2t. If you want to solve this in a more specific way, we have two initial condi conditions that I assign to it. So at theta equals zero, at time t equals zero, I assume that the pendulum is in this position exactly. There's no angle here. Yeah, and I also assume that the speed, the angular speed here equals one. So it has a certain speed here, v zero, that speed is l, and phi zero is omega L is d theta dt times L. So d theta dt becomes one at t equals zero. So it has a certain speed in that direction. And it has a uh, location like so, yeah? Now you can calculate lambda one and lambda t of this generic solution. And that's just the ABC form formula. And that gives you these values based on this equation here, right? So theta double dot, you make lambda squared, you make lambda here, you put a one here, you solve the ABC formula and you get these two values for lambda. I didn't write it further out in the answer here because it gets really tedious and big. So now we're gonna use these two initial conditions to calculate alpha one and alpha two. So first we're gonna fill this one out in the generic equation here that gives you alpha one plus alpha two, that needs to be equal to zero because you evaluated that t equals zero. Then you differentiate this one, one time. So you make a dt or d theta dt, which brings forth the lambda one here and the lambda two here. You evaluate that t is zero. So you get alpha one lambda one plus alpha two lambda two equals one. You, f you now have two equations with two unknowns. And you can solve those and you get alpha one is this and alpha two is that. And that gives you a generic solution if you now fill that. You fill out the alpha one and alpha two into this equation, you get theta. And now you have theta as a function of t, which looks like this. Now there could be various behaviors there. You can have oscillatory behavior like this, depending on what values you have here. 
if this is a complex number, meaning if this is bigger than this, you get a complex number here, you get oscillatory behavior like this. Yeah, so it all depends on how you define those various uh, k and c and what the length is and what b is and what a is. Depending on that structure and those parameters, you will determine uh, various behaviors. It could also be that there's so much damping in, in the system that there's no oscillatory behavior at all. And then you get behavior like this and like this. Yeah, this is a special case where this is exactly zero and then you get this type of behavior. So you get in this case, for instance, or in this case, the damping is so strong, so C is very big, uh, you don't get oscillatory behavior, right? It gets an initial speed here, it comes a little bit off and then it falls back immediately in this case and it stops essentially because there's too much damping in the system yeah if you modulate k you can modulate the frequency here so it goes quicker or less quick okay so that gives you a little bit of an idea on how to solve these types of uh, systems i think this is a great place to stop if you like this video please subscribe and please like and i'll see you in the next